Okay, so I've had my beer sitting out for about 10 or 15 minutes. It seems like a, a decent temperature for tasting. We're going to go ahead and open it up now. Here we go, i got to pour. Now with regards to pouring, you should always do it, uh, you hold your glass at about a 45 degree angle and pour the beer along the side until you work up a bit of a head straight down the center. In pouring the beer somewhat roughly, what you're doing is you're agitating the beer, you're causing the CO2 to come out of solution. When the CO2 comes out of solution, it brings with it the aromatics that allows you to smell your beer better. So here we go, I'm going to take a, 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 a sniff here. Now again, the glassware does a very good job of capturing and concentrating all those aromas so I can get a real good aromatic impression of this beer. Very clean, very rich, lots of malt, a lot of fruit. This is a, an ale, uh, so there's a lot of fermentation characteristics we refer to them. A lot of uh, the fruits that I mentioned. Very low hop aroma at this point in time. And uh, you always want to register the aroma first because, as I said before, with the CO2 bringing all those aromatics out of the beer, the aromatics become very fleeting. In other words, they basically just waft off into the air. So you want to uh, register the aroma first. Then you can go ahead and admire the beer and go ahead and taste it as well. What we look for when we're looking at the beer, we look for three things. Color, clarity, and head retention. So obviously you see that this has a nice copper bronze color. It's for the most part clear, a little bit of a haze. And the head retention is a little bit low. With regards to the taste, most of us are familiar with the term of aftertaste. So most people would assume that there's just a taste and an aftertaste, when in truth there's actually a foretaste, a mid-taste, and then an aftertaste. In other words, your tongue and your palate taste different things as the beer is gliding backward towards your throat. And depending on what the ingredients are in the beer, they will manifest themselves differently on your palate as you're tasting. So be aware that the sweetness of the malt usually registers up front the foretaste. Most of the hops and hop flavor and a lot of the grain flavors will register at the mid-taste. Then as you swallow, you get more of the hop bitterness along with any dark grain bitterness, if there is dark grain, as well as any warmth that you feel going down the throat. So it's, in a sense, it's a three-step process. After you've had an opportunity to think about the foretaste, mid-taste, and aftertaste, then you also think about the mouthfeel. When we talk about mouthfeel, that includes uh, things like, as I mentioned, the, the warmth of the alcohol. Uh, it also has to do with astringency. It also has to do with the bitterness. And it can have to do with any tannins that might be present in the beer. Um, we also talk about beer as having body. Beer can be very light-bodied or very, beer can be very heavy-bodied. In this case, this particular beer is in the medium range. When you've had the opportunity to register the aroma, the taste, the mouthfeel, then it comes to the time where you, what I, I call it reflection. You reflect on the beer, you think about the quality of it, you think about your opinion as a consumer. Do I like it or don't I? In this case, I like it a lot because I brewed it. Okay, so now you know how to properly taste a beer. I appreciate your checking out this mini course. Uh, thank you very much for that, but make sure you click on the link below so you can check out the master class that I'm going to be doing. And here we're going to be talking about a lot more beer details in greater detail. So check that out. Click on the link. Thank you for coming by.